we are squawking dead welcome i suppose it is the season for mid-season breaks and the regular boredom that you normally have to wait for between um the first half and the back eight and i figured it'd be a good time to kind of take a an early night as it were maybe um perhaps take a little bit of a break <laughs> Maybe have an hour-long episode instead of two hours. So uh, now's as good a time as any to kind of, uh, you know, start things off. Maybe take a couple questions, that sort of thing. So one of the things that we've been trying to do a little bit more lately is obviously improve upon the streams a little bit more. You see the little fancy little graphic showing me speaking and all that stuff. So that's that's kind of cool. We're, oh, I'm planning to do a lot more than just that. Every now and again, I we've been toying with the idea of interviewing people over the internet, that sort of thing. We've always been able to do it, but I kind of enjoy the idea of showing cameras and stuff like that the hosts have people in around you know focusing on certain people when they speak that sort of thing and we've got some interesting things in the pipeline in terms of that haven't been solidified but at some point they will be that pretty much sums that up for now basically exciting things are here to come but i don't have everything down in stone i haven't written down in stone so i don't want to commit to saying anything out loud but i will say one thing the first thing is uh probably sometime next week uh we're gonna announce a giveaway i'm probably gonna have a short um, um, episode covering what we're going to be giving away as well as um, after the podcast putting all those things up making sure it's on the website that sort of thing and make sure our bases are covered in terms of that too and giving people a little bit more notice about the fact that it's coming out and you know we've mentioned on the show uh, the last three episodes hey i am the dark too it's good to see you so to speak i guess i haven't let you change your name it's still ted wouldn't it be bad if i called you ted <laughs> But what if that was your name? I'd be like, oh no, he's outed me. Uh, as I was saying, so you're gonna have enough time to kind of uh, get on your haunches and uh, be ready for this giveaway thing. And I'm gonna probably wait a couple days before promoting it on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and all that stuff. And, and by promoting, I mean actually putting money down on uh, on uh, a actual advertising stuff like that. You know, we, we did that last time. It was really really successful. We had we actually had some really good hardcore fans that really 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 were interested in that Negan statue. Yeah, and I'm looking at like if you guys look at shopthewalkingdead.com, like that statue is going for like over $400. It's bananas. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know if they ran out. I haven't checked the uh, McFarland website, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I know that there was a limited amount of uh, statues manufactured, but um, and I don't even know what number was the one uh, that uh, Scott got the winner. But uh, but I know that he's happy and he's actually posted about it. If you if you check out his uh, Twitter, uh, he actually mentions us. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, some really good feedback from Instagram. Uh, thank you. I in the dark too. Uh, you guys, you and everybody else is really helpful in trying to help me figure out what we're going to be giving away. I'm not letting the cat out of the bag, but I will say, um, the Funko pop, uh, idea is definitely going to be on the table. Uh, the itty bitties, I think, uh, or something that I wanted to do, um, from the beginning. Oh, Hey, Walani. Uh, and AMA is kind of a, like an ask me anything. Uh, now that it's kind of like mid season break, it's kind of like a free play episode of Squawking Dead. So it's more of like uh, if you guys have had, have had any thoughts in this season, any season thus far, if you have any personal questions for me, um, now's the time to ask them. But yeah, uh, yeah. so Fun Funko Pop Toys uh, figurines, but I'm trying to figure out exactly what quality figurines I want to give away. Um, and um, yeah, so... Uh, I, and I think I'm thinking maybe a statue because I've seen some really good ones. I saw a good one of Carl... I think I, I even saw a good one of Herschel. There's definitely like a series of statuettes that are really cool and they're actually kind of collectible and have its own pedestal sort of thing. I don't know how ham I want to do at go uh, with this one um, because I mean, I, I kind of want to save some more money for uh, a future giveaway. Like basically if there's going to be an overlap or not an overlap, but if, um, if uh, the walking dead and fear the walking dead are basically going to touch and not have a break, um, no giveaway. So probably during mid season break for fear the walking dead, but it's probably gonna be in the summer. We'll probably do another big giveaway. Uh, so uh, other than that, uh, there is some other interesting things that I, I'm going to take a minute to kind of talk about at the beginning of the show also, um, because we, <laughs> I, I've been bringing these up at the end of our episodes, the last two or three, 
And that's um, the idea of guest hosting Squawking Dead. Um, and um, oh, isn't it cute? You guys are saying hi to each other. It's so, so precious. Um, but yes, we are looking for a third guest host to uh, squawk with us. Um, so as you, as you may or may not know, Carol um, is taking a small step back in terms of uh, doing the podcast. She, she is and will always be uh, my number two. And, um, and um, it, it, it's kind of funny. I, I feel like a ship uh, adrift without her. Uh, it's kind of an interesting feeling to kind of, be, kind of be on my own in this project because this really was an us project from the very beginning. And I'm kind of being a little bit more candid than I probably should be. <laughs> but um, the way I feel about it is um, I look at these sort of things as kind of like an opportunity. Like she's still actually writing the blogs and she's amazing when it comes to her writing. She's an amazing interviewer. I can't say that enough. I feel like I say it in every single episode. The, the way she beautiful minded Tom Payne, it was, it was just, just glorious to watch. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so she's still, uh, you know, she's, is and always will be the biggest, you know, big part of the show, but you know, it's, it's come, it's occurred to us that like in terms of timing, even myself, I mean, I was supposed to go on last night and maybe it's the mid season break, uh, sleepy's kicking in. Um, the idea that, you know, I'm, I'm there, I'm emphasizing the live shows a little less and I could probably just do the audio thing, but I kind of like the live experience. I mean, as it is right now, we have three people on the YouTube stream right now, which is a new record. And, um, uh, we usually have a couple of people on Facebook and a handful of people on the Instagram live. Um, but now like everything's upside down and m mostly everybody's on YouTube, which is probably appropriate anyway. But the whole point being is that um, when uh, The Walking Dead comes back, um, yeah, I know I miss her too. <laughs> but thank you. Um, yeah, but when uh, when The Walking Dead comes back, uh, there's going to be going to be a need for more consistency, and and we're going to have to nail shows um, at a certain time. Like we can't go like we could the, the max we can do uh, in terms of uh, setting up a recording time is like Thursdays because that is just enough time to get the episode out by like Saturday or Sunday uh, between like five hours of editing, you know, writing down show notes, all that stuff. So it, it's kind of one of those things where <clears throat> I mean, if we could actually record earlier on in the week, but that would be great. But I think Wednesdays at 10 is kind of a fair, um, a fair time slot um, for everybody involved. And, uh, and so the idea is that I do want to get you guys um, involved also. I mean, if you guys have any, any um, conversational skills whatsoever, if you know how to talk, <laughs> give us a call. Um, proverbially, obviously nobody calls each other anymore, but um, yeah, they're on, on our website, squawkingdead.com. You can literally go to the bottom right of the page and you can click a little chat bubble on the bottom right uh, and you can type out a Facebook DM or a Twitter DM and uh, send that over to us. You can also just email us at info at squawkingdead.com and uh, yeah, just let us know whether or not you'd be interested, even just interested in just hosting, uh, guest hosting with us. It could be the three of us. Uh, it could be just the two of us. Uh, you never know. Um, I have, I've been speaking to the original super fan Rob and um, I've been trying to coax him onto the show because he's just an amazing conversationalist, amazing human being. And, I, and I'd love for you all to meet him. And I'm going to be referring to him as super fan Rob. <laughs> it's just, it just seems appropriate. Um, Cause he was kind of like the first person whom I told uh, he's actually, he's actually a customer of my company. And we just had this really good working relationship. And so I thought it, be, it would be just a really good idea to get him involved too, because we do talk about the, the walking dead sometimes. And he tells me how he listens to the podcast. And I think it's, it's, it's really great. And um, so kind of as a thank you. And also the fact, the sheer fact that I think he would make a really good guest. Um, yeah. I've been trying to guilt him into uh, being a part of this project. Um, but yeah, uh, so we, we already have some questions or some comments. And one of those comments are, um, yes, the heavy un uh, underutilization of Tom Payne, uh, aka Jesus from The Walking Dead. And it, we've, Carol was actually the first one to point this out um, last year. Um, there were scenes that we were expecting, um, basically a, a fight scene between Jesus and Negan that was supposed to happen that never ended up happening. Um, and we, we were all kind of like thinking, oh, okay, it's coming, it's coming. Maybe it's going to come this season, season nine. And obviously we didn't have time for that. And you, what happened happened in the last episode and uh, that's not going to happen. Um, so there was that. 
Uh, and, you know, we took stock of season eight. And um, w- I mean, just looking at the, I mean, he's in, he's credited in every episode, but doesn't appear in many um, or, or especially not featured in many. And w- one of the questions that we asked Tom Payne is basically, you know, were you able to actually do anything, um, you know, between shows that you were actually involved in and shows you weren't? And, um, and basically he said, it's, it's kind of like they're keep they keep you hostage um, because I mean, they, you can't really venture out and do other things. Things because they they might need you on set, um, you know, for any any odd number of sequences behind the scenes, and just for the fact that like you really you kind of have to be sequestered away so that you don't get you know busted or people don't accost you and they don't you know you don't spill any beans and stuff like that. So it, it's just one of those th- it's just one of those things um, that he was he kind of had his hands tied. I mean, he's obviously getting paid, but at the same time, like you know, you're an actor, you want to create, you want to you want to actually do something. Um, and so you could just just sniff the frustration off of him uh, in person, but you could also kind of sniff it through the TV. He's made it kind of obvious. So um, yeah, it, it's it's frustrating for everybody involved. Um, and I mean, to be frank, it I don't really see how they would have been able to do that. To be honest, I mean, yeah, it's it's just really difficult. I mean, I I don't know what they were going to do or expected to do. Yeah, okay. So Alani, what's interesting about Tom's training? Okay, when he first came on the show. Um, and I did this when I was doing the research. I, I, I kind of wanted to show off a little bit, but um, Tom did all this training with Stephen Ho and everything, um, who's like this insane um, martial arts trainer. And uh, he, he spent six weeks with him, basically getting him in, into shape for the show, teaching him all these moves and all that stuff. And, and just like knowing that and then knowing that he just died. I mean, at the time when I was doing the research, you know, he had, that wasn't even down the pi- uh, the pipeline. It was Walker Stalker Atlanta. Um you know, so we had no idea this was coming, and uh, so things were th- things were looking pretty sweet on the horizon. Uh, I'm not sure when exactly Tom got the call that he was going to die, um, but yeah, it, it's just it's. I mean, it, all this work. I mean, he even mentioned, I think, on Talking Dead on the couch, um, how he even had a little bit more training for this season uh, going into it again. And yeah, it's just this weird, <laughs> this weird unsettling feeling that. Um, we were all gypped. I mean, I, you know, and it's it, what really, I think what really ticks me off is that I think a lot of people lay that, uh, lay the blame on Scott Gimple. And I don't think it's that simple. Um, you have to understand something like there are like a billion producers on this show, a billion. I mean, count it. It's a lot. Um, you know, David Alpert, Denise Huth, I mean, obviously Scott Gimple, Greg Nicotero, uh, um, I'm missing some people, Angel Kang, Kang. Um, score. I mean, it's 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 just a, a hefty. Oh, um, uh, what was her name? I always forget her name too. Oh, you know the activist one, <laughs> um, the one who's always on Twitter tweeting stuff that's a, a little too political. Um, Gail Ann Hurd. <laughs> And, and I always say, uh, t- when, it's always when I say it's too political, and then I think of, oh, she wants to be heard, and that's G- Gail and Heard, of course. Um, n- and it's not that, I'm, it's not a criticism, but it's just an observation. <laughs> so, um, so that's, you know, that's how you remember. Um, it, it, there's a lot of people on the show. So it, it, to lay, lay it out on Gimple like that, it's kind of, I mean, I'm sure it makes everybody else feel better about themselves, but, I, <laughs> and I think Scott's more than okay taking, the, taking on the burden but still um you know and and by the way i mean tom's tom's just a guy i mean he's a very kind guy but he's just a normal guy i mean he's not any kinder than any one of us he's not any you know any cooler than any one of us he doesn't he surely doesn't make himself out to seem cooler than any one of us so i think that's pretty cool i've i've always i mean i can admire somebody just being a guy and being um just being themselves and i think the one thing you can't accuse Tom of is being anything other than himself. In fact, one of the cool things that I did like about Tom in, in my research is that um, that he moved to America not only to get a better acting life, but it just seemed like people were more, even though people are kind of nutty here, um, people do seem to be more authentic here. Um, and so it, it, it gave him the impression that he could be himself in America more than he could be in the UK. Um, and that was one of the biggest kind of questions I wanted to ask ask because um, with all the, all this talk about like, you know, everybody does ask him about, hey, do you ever want to take uh, film in the UK again? And he's kind of like, eh, no, I kind of like it here. 
like the one thing, one question I did want to ask him was, um, would you consider yourself an American? I mean, he's been here for quite a while. And so I think it would be an, an interesting definitive, you know, yes on that one. And I kind of wanted him to just admit it or say it out loud. So, uh, oh, sorry. Um, and we only had like 10 minutes to actually interview him. So, I mean, and I just let Carol do her thing. She was just simply amazing. And, and it's just a shame that we couldn't, um, we didn't have any of the, uh, of the audio. I would have used crappy audio if we even had that. Um, and, uh, but it was, eh, eh, I'm not going to go through that. There's a video on that. There's a, like a, a few minute long um, live video, like six minutes, seven minutes explaining the whole thing. Um, I've even linked in that video. Uh, if you look at the cards for that video, and I think there's even a, a URL to the to the actual interview that we had with no audio. I, I it's, it's not public, but you can get to it from that that um, uh, the giveaway announcement video. Um, yeah, so there are there are ways to get to that interview. You just have to kind of click in. So, yeah, actually, I'm the dark too. Um, Tom actually lives. Well, I, I don't know. I. Th- I know he bought a house um, in, I think, in Georgia. Um, but I do know that he's in New York City right now. I don't know what he's working on, but I definitely know he's here now. Oh, you know, well, just so everybody knows, I, I live in New York City. Uh, Kara lives down in Florida, but um, it does afford me some opportunities when it comes to inter- interviewing people and. Um, and, and getting some business opportunities, but you know, but uh, yeah, that's for later. <laughs> Ooh. But hey, how are you guys doing? I, I kind of, I'm kind of curious to see how, um, you know, how you guys have been. How are you? Fe- how do you feel during this break? I, I mean, know it's been like only a, a week or so, but has the panic <laughs> settled in? Are you guys feeling any anxious? I know a lot of people are start already starting to feel frustrated about not having their Walking Dead fix uh, this Sunday. Uh, they always, they already had to put up with it last Sunday, and not all of us are Americans too. Like Walani, I'm not sure where you're from, but um, you know, uh, not everybody celebrates the American Thanksgiving, and so coming off of that, you can kind of be okay with missing one weekend, but uh, what, you know, and another weekend, and then all of a sudden you start to start to the panic set up, settles in. Is like, what do I do with myself on Sunday nights? I mean, I, I mean, are they supplementing with Ride with Norman Reedus? And, and you know, this is like, this is not Walking Dead. This is bullshit. Um, so I mean, there's only so much of that you can watch before you're kind of like, okay, this is enough. Yeah. Okay. So I in the dark is doing great, but having withdrawals, <laughs> like I, I, I totally identify with that. It, like la- I, I know that some people were okay last Sunday, and, and I was kind of too because there's something about not having to be like completely committed. Oh, see, so oh, okay. I think you guys are from the general area, both you, both Walani, and um, either way, we're on the, we're all on the Eastern Seaboard, so we're all in the same time time zone. Um, and we all have work tomorrow, and you decided to spend your time with me, and I appreciate it. Um. Uh. But yeah. So the that that first weekend, there was something liberating about not having to be there at nine. But also, there was I just from the morning, I'm kind of like, what am I to do with myself? There's this commitment that I have. Um. That's beyond. That's a tiny bit beyond fandom. And that's the idea that, that you better sit down now. You know, at nine o'clock, you better sit down now be, and enjoy this because later on, you're gonna have to tear this thing apart. <laughs> you have two. You have two three days to actually tear this this episode apart so you can talk about it on the show and you know you better bring some of that insight juice um because uh yeah it, and it's just this process it's just you go through the episode you just pause you rewind you're like did he just do that and then you write that down and it's ugh. yeah it's, it's a whole thing um oh you're gonna start binge watching it uh, i in the dark too um i'm you know what people have been posting a lot of the um first season, second season, third season episodes. And it's getting me really, really forlorn for like just wanting to maybe just do a marathon of it all. I mean, but, I mean, I just don't have, <laughs> I wish I had the time for that. Like maybe I should just like allow myself to watch like an old episode or two or cause there's some, like some of the scenes that people are playing on the Instagram videos there. I'm like thinking to myself, I, why do I not remember some of this stuff? Like it's this thing where it's familiar. It's, it's like trying to recall something from your childhood uh, on your own and then watching a video of it and, and suddenly realizing that, Oh, I remember this completely differently. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you better not miss a thing, buddy. Oh, well, you know, um, sometimes I do. And sometimes people wish I, I missed some things because I will make a mountain out of a molehill. Okay. When it comes to observations. Um, I mean, it's like a critique of some people. It's kind of like, dude, do you have to read into everything? <laughs> so, 
Yeah. And it often causes it to be uh, our podcast to be unnecessarily long. So, um, but yeah, uh, I, hmm, I'm trying to think of myself, like what other questions do I have? I mean, I, I've gone over um, some of the theories that I have for mid for the um, from when the season picks up again. The the whole bit about the rider, as I mentioned in the last episode, um, it explains a lot from the marks on both Daryl and Michonne's back uh, backs uh, to uh, the sudden like xenophobic policies of Alexandria, even Hilltop, when it comes to some things. Um, yeah, so it, it's um, there's, so there's a lot in the pipeline. I, I've been seeing more uh, pictures of uh, Samantha Morton. By the way, funny story. Um, I had kind of raced through uh, last episode with full confidence saying Genevieve Morton instead of Samantha Morton. And I just literally, like, just like full confidence, like the 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 full confidence and bullshit of a t- of a typical New Yorker. <laughs> and um, turns out Genevieve Morton is a is a supermodel of some kind, and Samantha Morton is an insane actor. Like, I was completely right in my mind about the who, just not the actual name. Um, and so again, I do think she will play a good alpha. Um, she has them crazy eyes. She can do crazy. I, I think her alpha is going to be a little bit more crazy than it is going to be rough, but you do see from behind that she does have this kind of, you know, like really good, strong walk towards the hilltop gates and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's it's going to be pretty interesting. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm a little bit more excited. I feel like the alpha that she's going to play is going to jump off the page a lot better than the comic book. I think she's going to, it's kind of like the way they change changed up the look of the governor from the comic to the screen. And I, and I've been loving some of the, the videos people have been posting about the governor and it's kind of, I'm kind of glad that people have been posting a little bit more about the governor um, in terms of video scenes, because what I've noticed is that he looks I, the one thing that I, uh, the observation that I made in, in the last episode was like, I don't think we've seen anybody that crazy since the governor or that terrifying to me. Um, like, I mean, Negan is a sort of terrifying, but there's something to it. You know, there, there's a, there's a kind of, there's a kind of science to it. Now, obviously there's a backstory to everybody, but there are people that have kind of jumped off the deep end and there are just some people that do things out of necessity. And there's, we've made arguments in season eight uh, on Squawking Dead about um, like in defense of Negan and Carol is, has vowed, uh, avowed herself as, uh, you know, team Negan all the way, you know? So um, even though I don't agree with her, we can disagree, we can disagree. um, But we have talked about that. And, the reason being is that you know you could really kind of look at Rick's crew as kind of the ones that instigated whatever pain they brought on themselves. Um, again, not agreeing. I mean, agree to a limit, obviously. Um, you know, she's not wrong, but it's kind of like uh, you know, it's not right. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So you're asking me a question. Um, hey, I uh, you think Michonne killed Cindy? Um, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. There's a flashback of Michonne. And if she did, would that have split the communities? That is, that's one of the things I did. I think I may have mentioned or skipped in the last episode. Uh, I know I wrote it down in my notes. And one of the things that I wanted to bring up was how we haven't seen anybody. Yeah, I did mention it. I mentioned like, where is Oceanside? The, the most that we've talked about when it comes to um, Oceanside is when I think it's Rodney, um, um, one of the Hilltop crew basically says, um, you know, he basically mythicizes the the ocean side as if like, you know, they are known, they are, they are like heard of, oh, oh, it's a tribe of women. But in essence, we really don't really see anybody from Oceanside. And I, and I actually, I'm kind of wondering that whether, um, I don't think anybody... It's, it's really hard to say. I mean, after all the mercy that Cindy has shown our communities, okay, like think about Aaron and think about how um, Enid killed um, Cindy's, like I think mother or wife, whatever, the leader from the Oceanside, uh, Natanya, I think it was. Um, you know, all the things that Oceanside let them get away with. I mean, Tara's whole thing from the beginning, bringing in Heath and... Ugh, that whole mess, and they kind of let her let him pass twice, and all that stuff. And then you know, okay, you think you give Cindy a little bit of a pass. Um, so 
it's just really difficult to imagine. I mean, I'm leaning more on the side of Oceanside being mostly massacred after Bridge Camp. I mean, take for example, Kathy died. I mean, died right on top of Rick. I'm well as a walker. But um, yeah, I mean, you really just don't, you stop hearing about Oceanside after um, Rick's last episode. But another thing that, that um, Jed had men- mentioned, I think this was, we talked about this uh, two episodes ago, um, and that was um, when the Marauders basically took over Henry and Carol. What you notice is that Regina has um, a harpoon, and Carol makes this vague mention of the those things belong to people we cared about. Uh, I don't think I actually mentioned this. I'm not sure. I, I know I know that one of these episodes, I had some big audio issues and I had to kind of rake over it again. But yeah, so she mentions that to them. And Jed just mentions, hey, but we, we just found these. We don't even know what you're talking about. And um, we, we'll never bother you again. And then she just throws the match. But it's just this big open-ended thing that she says, um, those things belong to the people I care, we, that, the, that we're cared about and all that stuff. And and it's kind of like, okay, okay, all right. And the last thing you do see the Savior Marauders do uh, on the Rick episode, um, you do see them face off against Oceanside with Carol screaming no before the cut. She just screams no. Um, and I did note that Oceanside drew fire first, or not drew fire, um, fired first. So, I mean, between killing the Saviors um, also, it's just this whole mess. Um, anyway, but yes, uh, yes, be right back. Nice. Okay, well, Lonnie. I will see you in a bit. We'll be waiting. Okay, well, let's everybody just not talk <laughs> until Alani gets back. Um, but no, uh, I, I, that was a really good question, I in the Dark too. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, so I guess I didn't really answer your question, I in the Dark too. Um, do you think, I mean, basically, do we think that, um, I mean, Walani even says this, do you think Michelle went after Oceanside? And I'm like, I mean, I, I, I don't know if Cindy is dead. Uh, I'm trying to take, I was trying to take a look at um, the Instagram f- pictures. My feeling is that we're going to see her in a flashback. I hope she's not dead. She's, br- she's kind of a cool character. Um, you've got like um, Mimi Kirkland who plays little Rachel, you know, the one that uh, Tara gives the middle finger to. Um, you even have Beatrice play by, played by Brianna Venskis, who's like in everything like Supergirl and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything. So I have seen her on set. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, so uh, it's just weird. It's it's this thing that's hanging in the air. I mean, th- this whole thing about walling off communities is is just so up in the air. It just it makes you nervous. Um, I mean, I'm glad they've given us enough nuggets, like I mentioned in the last episode. You know, looking ahead, um, that make us kind of excited. I mean, they've illustrated the fact that they are going to go into this. That they are going to go into the, into what had happened. I mean, and, and then Angus Sampson in that one frame. It's kind of like. Now I'm like really excited about what's to come. Angus Sampson's the shit. I mean, I, I've, I know I've gone on and on about Angus Sampson. I mean, but, but if you guys are ever in the market, I mean, look, it's, it's mid-season break. And if there's any recommend, recommendation that I can give you that will certainly tide you over, it's um, just binge watch the hell out of Shut Eye on Hulu. I mean, if you don't have a Hulu account, get the trial um, and you'll be able to binge watch everything. It's a Hulu original. Um, and if you have time, the path. But um, and obviously, uh, Handmaid's Tale. But I have, I even I haven't seen that yet. But but Shut Eye. Just block everything out and just just start watching Shut Eye and don't stop until you've watched all two seasons. It's just this. It's just fascinating. It's just so good. And and Angus Sampson plays this really. He his character just evolves, and it's it's this really cool thing to watch. Um, yeah, I mean, uh. Hmm. I'd love to play like questions f- with you guys. Um, I'm afraid to play with you, Eye in the Dark, too, because you're you're all about the mystique. You're all about staying in the shadows. Um, but uh, yeah, well, Lana, you're from Virginia, and you said you'd be back in a bit. But um, where are you all from? I mean, as many people as there are here. Um, yeah, uh, I'm curious. I'm curious to see where you're all from. And I mean, if whoever's listening on the audio stream afterwards, um, feel free to contact us. I mean, let us know who you are, what you're about, um, where you're from, how you got into The Walking Dead. Um, do you like Fear the Walking Dead or not? That's a really good question that um, I often ask people. Like, And you can be totally honest about it. Um, most people have been pretty frank. Um, but those who feel like they can't be frank usually don't 
don't say anything. And I'm like, just, just say it. It's fine. We could talk about it. Um, because I think some of the things that people uh, critique about A Fear of the Walking Dead, um, you know, I have those same, I share, I share most of those criticisms. Not all, but some. And um, I still love it. Uh, it's still my baby. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can have those opinions. Actually, I'm curious. Um, yeah, I in the Dark too. You Do you like Fear the Walking Dead? I feel like you do. Um, I feel like you do. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I wanted to say on the show. I mean, other than really, I, I really do. I can't emphasize enough how much this um, guest host thing, uh, guest host search, uh, how important that is. Um, I do love conversation. I do love the feedback, the back and forth. I love the ideas that I never thought of. Um, I, I just the conversation bit. I mean, you don't have to be this intense viewer of the show. You don't have to look, you know, you don't have to have these deep observations. In fact, it's probably better if you don't. Um, I mean, Carol, Carol what, what makes Carol so great? I mean, aside from the fact that she has the gift of gab and is a great storyteller and good conversationalist is that, um, you know, she has deep knowledge on the comics lore. And I mean, obviously he's always excited to watch the television show, but, um, you know, she's got the knowledge background. She's kind of funny. She, she's a great conversation, kind of conversationalist. I mean, I'm a dummy. I, 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 everything I know about the show, I know based on watching it and, and everything that I throw on top of it is just me trying to find meaning and, and purpose and signs and, um, sometimes filmography and sometimes the way things are shot. I like, um, I like really, Really, really cleverly written stuff, things that call back to each other. I mean, some of the things that people are finding and how some of the same words are used between different characters, and not in a lazy way, but in, in a purposeful way, it's perfect. Um, so I in the Dark 2 is saying, yes, she loves Fear of the Walking Dead, love John, loves John Dory, Al, and Morgan. Um, something tells me that you, oh, well, I read that, but you took it back. <laughs> Um, something tells me that you um, you did not watch Fear the Walking Dead for the first uh, three seasons, and you kind of tuned in in the the fourth season, which is not a bad thing. It's just um, I think most people that are watching Fear the Walking Dead did tune in um, in that fourth season. Um, oh, you must be you must be listening on a phone because your autocorrect is telling is typing out Dory as Doris. <laughs> And, and you, I think you're probably going to keep wiping that out until you say Dory because he's just that good. I mean, it's it, Dory with an I-E, not a Y, like the fish. Um, okay. Okay. Yes. Wani. Yes. I love your candor. Um, he says, uh, I wasn't a big fan of Fear the Walking Dead, but with Morgan on there, I've been loving it in Dory too. That's, that's like a perfect answer. I mean, some people, when they first started watching Fear the Walking Dead, they weren't really that into it. I think there's something about the environment. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Wait, hold on a second. So I am the dark. So you've been watching from the beginning. Uh, let me know because there's obviously a lag, but, um, but yeah, yeah, uh, Walani, perfect episode, uh, perfect um, answer. I mean, um, you know, and it's fair. Uh, Carol, <laughs> I'll put it, I'll put it to you this way: Carol was not a big fan of uh, Fear the Walking Dead, um, and uh, even after season four, she's still kind of not. <laughs> <laughs> something about the back half of this season really kind of like almost violently put her off. No, um, not violently, but it was enough for her to kind of want to say like, I can't even look at this anymore. I can't, I, I watched it, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to cover this. Just, I'm just going to be too angry. And I told her, you can be angry on this show. It's fine. We can have an interesting back and forth. You know, in fact, like I was kind of trying to encourage her to actually cover that last episode with me. I, that last episode, episode 30, I, I covered the season, the season finale of uh, *Fear the Walking Dead* season four, and um, and uh, yeah, it was <laughs> it was typical panicky. Um, I, I think I was live, but obviously there was nobody was on, so <laughs> I just kept rambling and going. So I'm just giving you this so that when you listen to the episode, you can laugh your ass off. Um, I, I I kind of went into a beautiful mind at one point because it was actually kind of fun to listen to myself at, at a, after a certain point. Like you get halfway through the episode, and all of a sudden you start because i do remember at one point i start i start spinning yarns and like complaining about things um and i kind of go a little crazy about it um but yeah uh yeah see and that's what a lot of people said like uh walani um they would watch the first season of fear or they get like and i think they did the same thing as um the walking dead i think they had a limited amount of episodes in season one and um they gave it uh, a chance
chance like most of the way through that first season if not all the way and they just they were not interested at all um but yeah I was, i'm sorry i uh, misjudged you in the dark too uh i don't know why i did that i really don't and uh i hope you forgive me someday <laughs> Uh, I laugh, and yet uh, I'm hoping you forgive me someday. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I'm just here with the lag now. <laughs> um, okay, so I think I'm going to wrap this up soon. But if you guys do have any questions for me um, or have any thoughts, I mean, pff, questions, whatever, who cares about questions? If you have thoughts of any kind, just spit them out in the chat, and um, we can talk about it. Um, I mean, where do you think the season's going to go? Uh, who do you think is behind what happened uh, to Oceanside? Uh, primarily because they're not here, apparently. Um, uh, I mean, why did Alexandria go all xenophobic? Um, you know, <laughs> well, Lonnie said he came, uh, I, I'm saying he, but it could be a she, um, uh, came back and then, dude, Travis fell out of the helicopter and I was gone again. You know what's funny about that is that um, there was a point in that season that like kind of hooked me, but kind of didn't hook me. It, it was this weird moment watching um, the crow eat do, do you remember this this was like in season three there was that raven or crow eating the back of that dude's head and he was talking and there was this weird moment where i was kind of somewhat freaked out um and then also somewhat put off like okay that this is really crazy um but then also kind of like okay rolling my eyes come on like this like this triple kind of reaction like i was kind of impressed by it but i was also kind of like okay this is a little bit too much of a gimmick this is obviously like during the kalataka walker um thing you know and um yeah so okay yeah and and by the way so that moment was kind of like me thinking like should i keep watching this show like what the heck's going on i'm not too into um daniel Sharman's character I, and i'm like failing to remember his name uh troy yes um and and but then i suddenly like found myself really liking troy and then i found myself really liking kalataka walker and and that whole that whole story i i just started really falling into it it was really frustrating but uh, you know obviously you know um oh yeah so i in the dark two asks do you think that they're going to kill off henry um yeah so here's the thing i don't think that they it depends on what they do with um uh, uh lydia um and i i mean I'd made some hard ass confident observations in the last episode uh, saying that Lydia, who is probably like half of um, Norman Reedus' age, uh, is going to go hardcore after her um, in, on the show, like as a character, not as a human being. Because um, <laughs> that, I mean, uh, Cassidy McClincy is, I, I have to check the ages, but she's got to be half his age, maybe even less. Um, but there's a part of me that thinks that that's going to happen. If there, there's going to be a romantic entanglement, it's going to be them. Part of me thinks Henry already has uh, Addy on his hands. And if Lydia does get involved, that could be interesting. Um, but what people have been saying is that Henry is going to be another head on the pike come season end. Um, so do I agree with that? I, I'm leaning towards no. I think there's a part of, hmm, I'm leaning towards no, but I, I can, f I fully recognize the, the intelligence behind yes, because it's not about how many people you kill on the show or it's about how you do it. Um, and it depends on who you kill. Um, I mean, I'm not, I, I'll be honest, like I am ruthless. Uh, I mean, I'm not one of those guys that kind of went after Gimple, uh, you know, because of some of the decision making. I mean, the, the only decision making I, I think I could go after Gimple on was, the length the sheer length of all at war being two seasons and plus so so here's the thing so it's kind of like i i when it comes to people dying off in the show that's just going to happen i mean it's been nine seasons i mean at some point we have to kind of get over it it's just who you kill why how how is that going to make you feel um you could say that it's all about purpose, but I don't think it's even that. I mean, sometimes the, a death does fulfill a purpose, but it doesn't have to. It just has to, has to make narrative sense. It's got to make you feel something. And I mean, preferably and ideally, it's got to move the story along. It's got to, it's got to, um, you could say that that part of that is in, wrapped up in purpose, but sometimes sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it makes sense from an emotional beat or um, 
to get you to feel something like, okay, like let's look in the future and say that Henry dies. What Henry represents on the show, just being the symbol of, of Morgan trying to find him and or sorry, Carol trying to find him and succeeding, raising him as her son. It'll get us to feel something intense. You know, he's not only in uh, a character, he's a symbol. Um, yeah. Oh, well, um, well, I'm not saying this. A lot of people are predicting this. And the thing about it is what you may or may not know, um, uh, what you may or may not know is that, um, Carl, uh, even though he dies on the television show last, you know, in the mid-season break last year, so around this time, right? Um, what you may or may not know is that Carl is supposed to die in this in this um, kind of arc. Um, so Carl does end up dying. He dies in kind of like the worst way possible. Actually, and it's his actions, like his kind of brazenness and kind of the brazenness that Henry is displaying now, like this the idea that he's get that he gets wrapped up in right and wrong. Um, so you do see that that brazenness and that kind of this idea that um, Lydia needs to be um, saved from these brutal people. That's what gets him to kind of step out of bounds. And obviously, there's a retaliation and Carl pays the price. And not only that, other people try to kind of... I don't know exactly the sequence of events, but what ends up happening is that he, other people try, you know, they think, you know, how bad can it be? And it's bad. Um, yeah, it's bad. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that if if people are predicting what they're predicting, um, saying that it's the end of uh, of the season, uh, season nine, I'm kind of surprised that it, that it would be that late in the game. And if it is, the, this is shaping up to be, um, it's going to shape up to be quite a long arc, not quite as long as all at war, um, probably about a season. I mean, I would consider the Whisperers arc um, starting from, even though we've seen evidence of that, obviously, uh, since the time jump, but I would probably consider it as revealed themselves uh, just last episode. And so I'm, if I had to make a prediction of any kind, um, uh, if I had to make a pr- prediction of any kind, I think that would come, I think this whole thing will end um, before mid-season. And if it doesn't, there'll be kind of like an extension of that arc. Um, um, yeah, uh, I think it dropped a whole bunch of knowledge on you <laughs> and your brains are kind of melting right now. I know like surface level shit, to be honest. Um, I mean, Carol's the one that kind of knows the comic books, but there's some things when you try to just do surface level research on certain things that your eyes see things that can't be unseen. But that's the thing. When people were talking about Carl's departure um, last year, um, this is one of the things that was brought up heavily everywhere. It's I'm surprised that people, that some of you guys um, kind of were able to survive the internet this, thus far without finding that out. But I mean, it's all in how it happens, less, less the fact that it happens. And think of all the divergence. I mean, one of the big things that I was kind of even just thinking today was how Daryl was not a character in the comics. And so the attachment that a lot of people have to Daryl and even Merle, let's say, is such a phenomena. It's this weird black hole ph- phenomena that like it t- that he's like their favorite character and yet he's not a character in the comic. Um, but the closest approximation of what I can think of like to compare it to, and this is a weird thing. Um, I was in a band um, actually about 10 years ago and we did this little project, this like five, six song EP. And um, half actually like two thirds of the songs, maybe four fifths of the songs were ri- written mostly by me and the, the band kind of perfected it and all that stuff. Um, save like two songs. Um, so like four of them were mine, uh, two of them were theirs. Uh, we're like ours. You know, we, we kind of wrote, I wrote all the lyrics to every song and blah, blah, blah. But it turns out like, the, like, you know, people did like a couple of my songs right off the bat, but their favorite song was a song that I had no part in except for the lyrics. Um, and it's this weird thing where it was like, you like that? You like this song? I don't even like this song, but you like this song? And and there's it's just this weird thing about like the musician's perspective of what they would like versus what every everybody else likes and this kind of thing like it's like if i ever had to sit down with bob kirkman and try to figure out you know like the one question i would ask him is like what is your reaction to people who like daryl and, and daryl wasn't even the comic um like how do you does it kind of make you feel kind of weird about it i mean does it make you feel kind of like is it interesting for you to kind of see how um or does it kind of like uh, echo kind of the sentiments you've said previously about how the show kind of makes the comic better like they, they make decisions that um 
that you would normally like if you could go back in time and make it fix a mistake um is it is it along those lines where you would have done that if you could have but the show kind of lets uh, does that for you so it's just kind of really it's a weird really weird, interesting thing to kind of watch bob kirkman talk about the show and how much he loves it and like even the the choices the show decides to make apart from the comics he loves because it's kind of like one of the things where like i cut like one of the biggest things that bob kirkman says is that i wished i hadn't cut rick's arm off in the comic and in the show he it, it stays on <laughs> I mean, you look at the covers of all these comics, like you, Rick has that hook and all that stuff. So um, it's, it's this really interesting joy to be a part of for him because then he can kind of right certain wrongs, rethink certain things and take them to their natural conclusions. Maybe ultimately come back to where they started, but you know, it, one can tell. You know, I mean, the fact that like uh, Amanda is off the was off the show so early, and Amanda was supposed to be what Michonne is right now was supposed to be Rick's love interest, um, and she was off the show like you know halfway into where we are now. I mean, practically. Um, oh, so uh, Walani says um, uh, saw Carl angry and building stuff online in the comics, but I haven't read it. Yeah, I mean, it's all in how it happens. So like whatever I say now, like. It, it's kind of a well-known thing because I mean, people were talking about it like crazy, um, you know, starting from last year um, all the way until now. Um, I mean, obviously until now, because we're talking about Henry and, and his role and all that stuff, but it's the how, I mean, it's, it's the meaning behind why it happens and, and, and what it takes for him to kind of put himself on the line and stuff. So it, it's, I mean, by the time you read it, you'll know way more than I will. And, and you'll probably agree with me on that one. Um, Walani also, also asks, uh, did you notice how many people on TWD are making CDs and music, by the way? Uh, yeah. Emily, Kin uh, Emily Kinney, Jordan Woods, Chandler Riggs, Tom Payne, and the girl that plays Enid. Yeah. Yes, uh, I actually have. Uh, part of the reason why I went to Walker Stalker was to actually watch um, Tom Payne's girlfriend perform. I forget her name, but the band is called Final Child, and um, they're really good. They're kind of like a cross between like churches, um, you know, the spelled C H V R C H E S to those who don't know. Um, yeah, and, and really, really good music. And um, yeah, I obviously like, uh, I've actually listened to Emily Kinney before, um, she's very talented. I, I, I've seen the photo shoots with uh, Chandler Riggs. I did not know he was a singer or uh, I don't know. Uh, is he going under his name or is, is he going under a, um, like a pseudonym of some kind or something like that or like a, an act? Um, I'm really curious. I didn't know Jordan Woods. Uh, Ro was it, jo is it Jordan Woods or Jordan Woods Robinson or something? But yeah, um, I did not know he was um, uh, a musical act of some kind. Um, I mean, everybody on this show has some chops, you know? Uh, I, mean, I mean, look at like all the side gigs all these some of these guys have like i mean kari payton doing teen titans I mean, it's just this weird fascinating thing to watch um and like all this multi-fandom you can have for one person i mean it's not just that i mean look at look at um xander berkeley's art <laughs> it's it's just it's so fascinating to like see some of the talents some of these people have um everybody's got something Oh, okay, so uh, Chandler Riggs is um, okay is going under Eclipse for his music. Okay, oh, okay, so it's it's just music, not singing. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna look it up. Oh, now I seem to recall it now. Yeah, I, I wow. I mean, he announced that like se I, probably several months ago, actually. Uh, now that I remember, I just haven't seen anything. I mean, I think our Squawking Dead account is following it. I just I don't think I've seen anything on Instagram or anything like that. So mm. <laughs> it's it's kind of like this weird thing where if it's not on Instagram, it doesn't. Exist exist so um <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I do have to see more of Caitlin uh, Nacon stuff. She did um, perform at Walker Stalker. I just was so kind of out of my mind crazy that I, I, I didn't get a chance to actually see her do it. Um, I did see her, a clips of her actually sing, um, I think on Instagram maybe. But yeah, she's definitely got chops. And I definitely heard her from the other room. So the layout was interesting. Uh, so I, I think I'm going to cut it off there. And, you know, in the interest of kind of keeping a, a short one, getting the message out about um, the rotation of uh, guest hosts that I'd like to see if I can set up for the back eight uh, at the very least if not like more um, yeah so if I, if I can get like at least two or three people lined up for uh, for guest hosting put them on a schedule uh, if any of you are interested uh, info at squawkingdead.com or just head to squawkingdead.com and hit the lower right hand corner hit the chat bubble you can message us on f uh, Facebook or Instagram using that um, uh, yeah and like hey hit, hit like 
like on Facebook, hit subscribe on YouTube, uh, and hit that bell so you get notifications when we go live. Because it can be sporadic. Um, yeah, on, if oh, normally when Instagram does work, um, yeah, we we can we're gonna um, yeah. If you follow us, um, you know you'll be notified when we go live. YouTube and Facebook are far better. Yeah, we all have to get sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I do the, I, I don't do this full time. I, I have a full time job. Actually, Carol and I both have like sixty hour a week jobs, so it's kind of crazy that we're able to do this. So thank you, uh, Walani and um, I'm the Dark Two, as always, for joining. And uh, in terms of the giveaway, leave us a comment uh, on what you think we should be giving away. Keep it in the realm of The Walking Dead. Yeah, just open your mind. Think of whatever whatever you can think of uh, in terms of a giveaway. I would say money is no object in terms of that. So just, yeah, think of something crazy. Sign stuff, maybe. I'll see if I can get a hold of stuff like that. Nothing is unreasonable. Hit us up. Info at squawkingdead.com. DM us. Let us know what you think. Leave a comment. Leave a like if you want to also, or leave us a star on iTunes Music or Google Play Music or whatever it is that you're listening to right now or listening to us on now, Radio Public, Stitcher. There's a whole bunch of things. Love you guys. Let's see if we'll have a giveaway podcast next week. Let you know what we're giving away. I'll even send you guys an alert. Get your comments ready. Get your questions ready. Leave them in the comments, that sort of thing. And uh, maybe I'll have something lined up for a show based on your questions and comments and stuff like that. So I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, I will try to catch you next week. Love it. Don't leave it. Yeah, you can tell I'm antsy. There's no show next week. So I'll be like, oh, I'll see you on Sunday. Like, no, you won't. But you'll see me next week. I'll talk to you guys soon. See you on the Instagrams, the Facebooks, the Twitters. And good night. <laughs>